Tmux has completely transformed the way I work with the terminal. It is one of those tools that since I learned it, I honestly can't imagine ever going back. This video is going to be a hands-on guide to Tmux, and I'll show you exactly how I integrated it into my daily workflow as a machine learning engineer with a practical example. This is the first video of a two-part series. In part one, we'll focus on the essentials, what Tmux is and how to use it. In part two, we'll dive into configuring it and how to make it look amazing and behave a little bit more sensibly. Now I'll admit that learning Tmux felt a bit overwhelming to me at first, but I've realized that you only really need to remember two commands to unlock almost everything that Tmux can do. I'll share those with you so you can pick it up quickly and enjoy using it right away. If that sounds like your kind of thing, stick around. It's practical, it's a little nerdy, and it might completely change the way you work with your terminal. So what exactly is Tmux? Well, Tmux is what is known as a terminal multiplexer, hence the name. Now it sounds fancy, but it basically just allows us to have multiple terminals in one. This description is a little oversimplified, but it's good enough for this introductory video. Now in Tmux we can organize our terminal into different sessions and inside of those sessions we can have multiple terminal windows and inside of those windows we can have multiple panes. And a pane is just a window split, like in a tiling window manager for your operating system. Now to understand why this is so powerful, it might be best to show you a real world use case. So now I'm in my terminal and more specifically I'm in a Tmux session. You can see that I'm in Tmux right now because of this bar at the bottom here. This is called as the Tmux status bar. And the status bar indicates that I'm currently in a session called my ML project and I have three windows open. One window called Vim, one window called Docker and another one called Jupyter. And the right side of the status bar shows my CPU and memory usage. Now using a keyboard shortcut, I can go to the Docker window and you can see that here I have another terminal open. And this one is actually split in two terminals. I have a Docker container running here on the left hand side and I have another terminal open here on the right hand side. This is what is called as a pane. So I have two panes contained in this window and I can switch between them using keyboard shortcuts. In my third window, the Jupyter window, I have another terminal open and this one is running my JupyterLab server. So currently I'm in the MyML project session, but I also have some other sessions open that I can switch between very easily. So I also have a session called default, MyML project and some other project. And those again could have different windows and different panes. But for now, let's go back to the MyML project session and go back into the Vim window. And here let's actually start NeoVim. So let's pretend that this is some kind of machine learning project that I'm working in. So what I would typically do is I would have my main Vim window here where I make edits to the code. Here I've created a very simple API endpoint that returns a prediction for some kind of item ID when it's called. Now let's pretend I want to shadow test this by spinning up the endpoint locally in a Docker container and making a few example API calls to it, inspecting the logs to see if everything is working as expected. What I can do thanks to Tmux is just go into my Jupyter window, spin up a JupyterLab server here. This will open up JupyterLab in my browser and then I can go to my notebook that I created. This is a very simple Python notebook that reads some data from a CSV file. Now I might do some data exploration here and then maybe find some kind of ID that I want to use for a prediction. In this case, let's say I want to get the ID for this particular item here. Let's say it's the 117. And then I can go back to my Docker window. And here I can use Docker to spin up the endpoint. Now the endpoint is running at localhost and here in the pane on the right hand side I can make a call to the endpoint with the item ID 117 and then I get the response back from the API and on the left hand side I can inspect the logs coming from the docker container. Now if I need to switch to a different project I can just quickly spin up my sessions, go to the other project and I have a completely new terminal window here where I can spin up Vim, make edits to my code, or do whatever I need to do. And once I'm done there, I can easily switch back to my previous session with one shortcut. So yeah, this is just one out of a million ways to use Tmux. I hope I could get across how powerful this tool can be and get you excited about learning it. Having said that, now let's talk about how to actually use it. Now to install Tmux, head over to the GitHub repository, go to the wiki page, and then how to install Tmux to get the installation instructions for your specific operating system. 
Once it has been installed, we can start a new tmux session by running tmux new s and then the name of the session, let's call it sesh. The first thing you will notice now is that the tmux status bar looks different to how it looked previously. This is because tmux is extremely customizable, so the appearance and the shortcuts can be fully personalized. In the next video we'll dive into configuring tmux, but in this video I want to show you the default configuration so you have a more general understanding first. Now let's run an ls command in my home directory. Now I will send the tmux prefix key and I'll get into what that means by pressing Control b and then I follow it up by pressing d. Now you can see that we are back in the normal terminal so we don't see the tmux status bar at the bottom anymore and it says here that we detached from the session. What this means is that the tmux session is still running in the background but we are now here in our terminal again and can do whatever we need to do and whenever we want to, we can go back into our tmux session at a later point in time. To see the tmux sessions that are currently available, we can run tmux ls, and there's our session. Now, to go back into our session, we can run tmux attach to reattach to our previous session. And here we are. Now, as you can see, everything we did in this session got persisted. This is another really powerful feature of tmux. As long as you don't explicitly kill the session or reboot your system, your session will get persisted even if you lose, for example, your SSH connection. There are three main ways to interact with tmux. The first one we have already seen. You just go to your terminal and enter a tmux command like tmux ls to list out the sessions. The next possibility is to run commands from tmux command mode. To enter tmux command mode, we have to type a prefix key and follow it up by a colon. By default, the prefix key is control plus B. So now if we press control plus B and then type colon, you can see that now the tmux bar turned yellow and here we can enter a command now, similar to how you would run commands in Vim. So if I type ls here and hit enter, then also we see a list of the sessions. To exit out of this view, we can press Q. The third and most common way to interact with tmux is directly through shortcuts. After you press the Ctrl B prefix, other keys on your keyboard become shortcuts for certain tmux actions. For example, if I press Ctrl B and then C, we can open another tmux window as you can see in the tmux bar. So now we have two windows open and I can move between those windows by pressing prefix N to go to the next one and prefix P to go to the previous one. I can also directly target windows by typing their window number. The asterisk symbol indicates the currently active window. Once you start to have multiple windows, you might want to rename them. This is done with prefix comma. And then you could rename this to main for example, prefix n to go to the next one, prefix comma to rename it to, let's call it second. The information that is shown here in the right hand side of the tmux status bar is different to what I have in my personal configuration. By default this shows the host name and time and date. If we want to split this window vertically into two panes, we can do this with prefix percent sign. Now we can do something here on the right hand side and we can do something else on the left hand side. We can go back to the left pane with prefix left arrow and we can return to the right hand side with prefix right arrow. There is a shortcut to split the window horizontally as well but honestly I forgot which one it was. But as I promised in the intro there's only two commands that you really need to remember in tmux. One of which I'm going to show you now. So let's go back into the main window and let's press prefix colon to enter tmux command mode and here let's type the command list keys. This command lists all the shortcuts that are available in tmux. We can inspect this view with control D to go down and control U to go up. Very similar to how you would navigate in Vim. Also very similar to Vim, if now we press forward slash we can actually search through this output. For example, now I don't remember how to split a window horizontally. So let me just search for the word split. And also just like in Vim, with n we can go to the next occurrence of the word. And here it seems that I found what I've been looking for. It seems that there are two shortcuts for splitting windows. One is using prefix percentage sign and the other one is using prefix double quote. So let's try prefix double quote now. I can exit out of this view by pressing Q. With prefix n I go to the second window and here let me try prefix double quote. Now the left pane got split again. And with prefix and the arrow keys, we can switch between those panes. Now you might be thinking that double quote and percentage sign are not the most intuitive shortcuts and I would fully agree with you, but the good news is that you don't have to remember them because you can always look them up with the list keys command and in the next video we'll anyways remap them to much more sensible shortcuts.
At this point, we might want to start a second session. Let's pretend I forgot how to do this. So this is where the second command that I mentioned in the intro that you need to remember comes in. Again, we can enter this command with prefix colon and the command is list commands. And this will give you a list of all the available tmux commands. As you can see, the first one is already familiar, attach session. We actually use the alias for this command, which you can see here in parentheses. Just attach also works. And then you also have the arguments that you can provide. Since I forgot how to start a new session, I will press forward slash to enter search mode and then search for the word new. This brings me to the new session command. So we can start a new session with the command new session, or we can use the alias, which is just new. And then we can provide a bunch of arguments there. The one that we're interested in is the S argument to provide a session name. So let's exit out of this view by pressing Q. Let's go back into the command mode with prefix colon. And now let's use the command new dash S to start a new session, which we'll call sesh two. Now we are in a completely fresh session with a completely new window. Again, here I can create a bunch of new windows if I want to. I can split them however I want to. And everything I do here is separate from the first session. If I want to go back to the first session, I can press prefix S for sessions. And this gives me a list of the sessions I currently have. In the lower half of the window, you see a preview of the different windows that I have in this session. Using the Vim arrow keys, J and K, you can select the session that you want to go to, or you can directly type the number that you see in front of it. So to go back to our previous session, I can just press zero. Again, back to session two with prefix S and one. So yeah, that's pretty much it. At least this covers about 90% of my personal Tmux usage. The last thing I want to show you is how to shut down Tmux. If we just want to kill a pane, we can do it with prefix X and then it will ask for confirmation, yes or no. Let's press Y. This is how you kill a pane. If we want to shut down the whole Tmux server, let's detach from it with prefix D, and then we can run Tmux kill server. Now we can confirm that this is properly shut down by running Tmux ls, and you can see that there's no more server running and we don't have any sessions right now. Alright, that's it. Stay tuned for part 2 where we'll go into the customization of shortcuts and the aesthetics of Tmux. If you found this useful at all, please consider liking and subscribing, it really helps out the channel. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time for more.